to Alien Theorist Theorizing, Case File 274, with your hosts, Zell, Dan, Dan. Oh. and Andrew. You may be asking yourself, where's the first theorist? Always putting himself first. Always putting himself at the top of the pole. Well, he's dead. <laughs> you may be asking yourself, why is ATT so sexy today? You might be asking yourself, why are my ears bleeding right now? Why are we it's looking so good? Because we shred about fucking 235 pounds. <laughs> That's why we... <laughs> That's so right good. before the show. Shed 235. Now, Brayden's taking the week off for to celebrate and support his wife in the birth of their first child, Roman. Congratulations to Brayden and Jamie. There's only one left. Only Dan's left now. Dan's got to have a whoopsie here. And, uh... Buddy, they're... <laughs> I'm telling you, I've seen pictures of Thailand. I've seen probably about 65 little kids running on the beach. <laughs> might be a few like Dan's in Thailand. All right. Uh. <laughs> Anyways, this case file, we're talking about something close, close home to me. A tale of the Highgate vampire. Personal friend. I mean, <laughs> if, if, if Zell were to have a, an anonymous vampire name, the Highgate vampire would definitely probably be it like this would this yeah it's appropriate you know <laughs> if we all didn't know that zell was recharging in his coffin in romania around this time then we it we probably suspect 100 percent that this was probably zell the va the vampires actually brought uh hash and cannabis around the world early in the early days little known we the first traders <laughs> smokers to hash <laughs> <laughs> How do you back that up? Okay. He was there. He was uh, there. I mean, okay. Well, take my take my word for it. I have to. Were you there, Dan? <laughs> I was there. I think so. Uh, yeah, the events surrounding this case uh, take place, um, right, you know, kind of in, in modern times. This is this is we, we've talked about vampire panics uh, before. At least Smoking your relatives for to, for safe yeah, passage. Fucking yeah, eating eating the ashes of your dead relatives and whatever, and getting Excuse nuts to and... burn your wife at the stake just because she's in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we've had that. Um, but this this one actually took place during uh, around 1965, where there were reports of some suspicious paranormal activity uh, in and around what is known as Highgate Cemetery. Um, I, now, that's the thing that, like, when we talk about this case, the fact that this took place in the fucking late '60s, early '70s gets lost on me every time because everything we talk about, I'm like, oh yeah, this is like fucking 1842 for sure. Like, this feels no, like it should be like bullshit. <laughs> our parents were alive. <laughs> like, our parents <laughs> were on this. This planet is just a generation ago. Yeah. <laughs> It what seems like fuck? it should be 200 years ago, but no. Uh, so Highgate Cemetery is a uh, is an is an older cemetery in the areas of London, England, and uh, the the original cemetery was established in 1838, and so and it, it, it does have a number of prominent uh, permanent denizens. Um, you have uh, a lot of writers, artists, philosophers. Um, some of the more notable guests are the uh, German philosopher Karl Marx. And uh, and also uh, Douglas Adams, author of one of my, you know, probably everybody, if you're into sci-fi, uh, favorite books, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which if, if you haven't read yet, you should read it. Um, um, one of the interesting so, things I was reading about this is like one of the regional reasons why they created the cemetery. It's like obviously like they needed space, you know, but this basically came across as like an overflow cemetery. Like they're fucking From all the cemeteries and towns are completely fucking <laughs> oh. full. They've got nowhere else to go. So we got we gotta basically build an overflow Dump parking lot right over here on the Stick most in inconvenient gate. fucking terrain possible. And one of the best parts about this fucking space is that it floods regularly. <laughs> so apparently the drinking the reservoirs like people that would get their their water from it would be regularly contaminated by fucking body parts that would wash away. Oh from my the cemetery. god. Oh, so oh, the, it, would, it would it would flood all the sediment would like would fall out like through a sinkhole getting, and into the. You're just getting oh. people soup. Yeah, like, dude, and like <laughs> like here's another thing. There, there's approximately a hundred and seventy thousand corpses in this fucking cemetery. They stack, keep stacking them up. 
probably. Oh, well, there's only fifty three grave or fifty three thousand graves and one hundred seventy estimated bodies, and they suspect that. Yeah, but uh, but some of them are like mausoleums and stuff, and like family. I think there's probably more than one. Like Zell said, there's probably like more than one and stuff in there. Yeah, but fifty three thousand and one hundred and seventy thousand bodies, and that's yeah, the only the ones they know. They're about. bunking them up. The they're they bunking them up, to, stacking them. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, oh man, that's fucking gross. Yeah, and like I mean, when they built it, it was kind of like nice for the time. But now, when we're talking about it in the '60s, like it's completely in despair. It's got fucking overgrown trees that create a shadow twenty four seven. The the tombs and everything are covered in crawling trees and ivy and stuff. Like this place is it's ominous. Is, it oh, is yeah. a quintessential spooky cemetery, um, exactly. and and so much so that in the 1970s it was a it, it was a place that was very popular to shoot horror movies. Um, you had like the taste taste the blood of Dracula from 1970. Uh, they shot some tales from the crypt, uh, I believe episodes from there, and from beyond the grave in 1974, um, which all featured footage from that taken at that location. So. In 1965, the people, some locals who lived around Highgate actually started reporting like an unusual amount of sightings of of something, of apparitions and uh, strange goings on and noises uh, that seemed to be localized around the eastern section of the cemetery. And often it was like. Uh, around that time, there were there were two certain figures that kind of kept kept popping up or seemed to be the ones that were um, most identified uh, or could be described by people who had seen them. So one was an elderly woman with long white hair that seemed to be drifting among the graves. And this one came with a little bit of lore that it was a the spirit of a woman um, who was searching for the, the graves of her murdered children. Oh, it's Eleanor. Um, Personal friend. <laughs> And um, and the other ghost, if that one wasn't creepy enough, was a like a, a skeletal figure that would stand by the main gate and like stare at people as they walk by, or like kind of just like um, you know spook people, I guess, as, as you do as a skeleton. I sure like you know. There's a skeleton, <laughs> just... skeleton with those eyes that don't move, but when you move, they seem like they're following you. Yeah, just the empty dark sockets. No, no matter where you look, it's yeah. always looking right at you. I wonder if it's like the fucking curmudgeon skeletor that just like shakes his bony fist at the kids. Ah, get like, your next kid. time, human. <laughs> That's the <good>. Bunglers. Uh, <laughs> um, so and, and so around this time, you had these rumors circulating also that there were occult rituals uh, being performed within. Uh, within on within and on the grounds of the cemetery and among its gravestones and its many uh like we mentioned before mausoleums and uh, uh there, there's another type of a grave and i can't remember what the name of it is right now but like yeah so you have like these ma- you have plenty of mausoleums and stuff so family graves and all these things like Dude, let's down. just pull let's pull up the google images because this place is sure. fucking ridiculous okay. like yeah no wonder they use it for movies it's the quintessential it's like 100 graveyard yeah. It's one hundred percent spooky, like, oh, yeah. and like the the craftsmanship the of these thing. fucking and, maus- and this, mausoleums is fucking top notch too. And these pictures, if these are recent pictures, like this is it, like cleaned up. Yeah, you know, it's like, like this I'm is sure, cleaned like, up. Some for of these tourism. are like, yeah, some of these are probably you know uh, have been maintain- maintained. Just look at that. Look thing. at this one. We're looking at yeah. it's like a it's a tunnel all overgrown. Yeah. It looks like some ancient that 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 that's a gate to the abyss of virus. It looks like something oh, from uh, from <laughs> Indiana Jones or something. Uh, if you needed to, if you needed a quick way to get to the underworld, like right there, <laughs> this is where I would point you. Who, who built this uh, house in the in the fucking uh, Satan? <laughs> There's a concept house of just a house sitting in the cemetery. Why? Who would want to live? In? Is it that like the groundskeeper's uh, house or something? Like, I don't know. Uh, it's a nice looking house. <laughs> uh, uh, so now in 1963, you had these two 16 year old girls who were walking home at night after having visited friends in Highgate Village, so in the, like the local area. And so on their way back from there, I'll tell you it what, took right off the bat, I know the story's legit, not exaggerated at all because it's two 16 year old girls. Exactly. Not one bit. <clears throat> That's yeah. <laughs> it's the most reliable uh, demographic. 
And so uh, their uh, their route took them down Swain's Lane, which apparently runs past the, like the front of the cemetery. And Swain's Lane. And so as they were walking past this uh, at past the gate, like there's there seemed to be coming like a ghostly fog that kind of seemed to to kind of sweep over the area and ghost farts. and through the fog, like as they were able to see through it and they got closer kind of the graveyard, they described um, uh, they described like bodies that they could see rising from the graves uh, of some of the places like, like zombie style, them. like their fucking hands popping out or like. Or like, actually climbing uh, just out of the bo- they said bodies um, appeared to be emerging from the tomb, so zombie style, probably oh, like kind of lifting up out of the, like out of the oh. ground and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I would assume. Yeah, zombie style sounds about right. <laughs> um, now, so you have this, you had this report kind of circling around as well, and then just like weeks later, you would have another. Um, you'd have a couple that were uh, walking down Swain's Lane as well, and. Uh, the the lady uh, described glimpsing something hideous behind the gate's iron railings. Like, her, and, and her fiance kind of corroborated the stories that he saw it as well, and that they both stood there staring at something that it's it was like a face, like some kind of terrifying, uh, like a, a terrifying visage uh, behind the iron gate that was just like frozen and absolute, just the the purest horror that you could possibly think about. And they just like, it just completely absorbed them. Like they could just stare at it and it just sent, you know, cold chills down their spine. And they just remember staring at this thing for what seemed like minutes. Uh, it was like a fucking Lord of hell or something. Something like that. Belial. You know? <laughs> um, so uh, the Highgate, the Highgate cemetery has had books written about it like uh, several books have been written about it and one of one of the books is uh titled written in blood a cultural history of the british vampire uh by one paul adams and Badass he <laughs> um he actually wrote about um one brian Bourne who is walking uh you know walking near the cemetery on a july evening in 1965 around 8 p.m uh he was walking his dog uh after of uh, attending a party and he was, as he passed the western gate of the cemetery, Bourne said he felt a sudden chill of unnatural stillness. And Bourne said that he saw some type of black liquid substance that seemed to flow down one of the cemetery walls. And then from that oozing black puddle, a tall masculine figure and shape just seemed to materialize out of it. And then he said this figure appeared to be oh, look almost like a man, like a tall man wearing dark clothes. And, but also, but then he also noticed that it had two glowing red eyes. Um, Another prince of hell. Hat. <laughs> and and Bourne's dog, you know, Bourne described like his dog entered into a state of distress, started growling at this at this apparition of what he had what he was seeing, and and. Born took off like you know that was enough for him he just just ran <laughs> from that thing fuck that fe- that that like feeling you just des- described everyone listening got that same feeling absolutely like a little, that little shiver up your spine you could you, you can picture it yeah i mean it's like it, this is something that you get you would see in uh you know in a, a modern vampire movie or something like that a way uh, you know a, probably a typical a typical method of locomotion for vampires would be to, you know, to materialize out of some black shadowy substance, uh, moving through things. If they're, I, you know. Know, I mean, when you're not, a, when you're not a flock of bats or whatever, you're not a swarm. No, it's, it's a misconception. I'd see that black it's not bats. just dripping. I'd see the drip it's, and I'd be fucking down. You're right. It's not, it's chance. not bats. It's not bats. You, we can materialize pretty much out of anything. <laughs> Puddles. Terrifying. Bats are, that's an easy thing to just like to picture. Like, Oh, you, you turned into bats. You flew away. But it could be anything. In this case, some black. Um, Same methods of sleeping. Venom like substance. To, What's the symbiote? Like symbiote. <laughs> venom appeared in this fucking cemetery. No, that wasn't Venom. This guy's weird. Venom would be cool. And you need to hear. Ven- venom would be cool. He'd be cracking jokes. <laughs> You'd be coming on me, and I would be. And we'd, we, we would be Venom. Uh, so, short, shortly after, after this 
experience uh, that was described by Brian Bourne, there were discoveries made of actual animal, animal carcasses that had been seemingly drained of blood and dismembered in certain states of dismemberment. Uh, literally discovered around the articles. Mid- the cemetery, yeah. Yeah, there's literally like so mostly these were foxes right dan like and they yep. literally had like titles being like what the fuck is happening to these foxes and they're yeah. fine like all of them has seemed to have died in some type of traumatic manner and they had been ex- exsanguinated which is fucking nuts it's terrifying oh so it's their version of the rutland cat killer but this it's the high gate fox killer yeah it's way worse <laughs> fox yeah, it's worse now <laughs> Now this, if this wasn't interesting enough, now you have some personalities entering into the uh, the Highgate arena. So yes. any any dude, any place like this attracts the best of the best in the supernatural world. That is true. Um, you know, just as just as uh, everybody's favorite ghost hunter Zach Baggins is inevitably drawn to a place of paranormal activation, so as those are drawn to places like Highgate Highgate Cemetery. Now, the first the first person to kind of enter into the onto the scene is a man named Sean Manchester, and he he claimed that he was a priest ordained by the Celtic Catholic Church, um, which he described as not related to the Vatican. Uh, just so by its own Catholic. its own branch of Catholicism, not yes. pedos. Right. They, yeah, they I don't guess. do the pedo yeah, stuff. They're not. They're not. Pedo. <laughs> um, uh, and then another another kind of strange claim that he made is that he's also he's also a descendant of Lord Byron uh, from Lord Byron's, uh, I guess, a, a romantic tryst with with a servant. So we've got a, okay. perhaps an illegitimate uh, heir proof. to the to the Byron name. Zero, <laughs> zero proof, proof, but zero. zero, but zero not proof. That's true. <laughs> no ancestry.ca uh, d- at this point in time but but you got something we got to know about this guy like google a picture of this guy this guy's got fucking he's got the best sideburns i've ever seen sure he's, he's he's like the rock and roll bishop the guy's a badass he's here to fucking like preach sermons and crack skulls it's true and we're all of sermons <laughs> badass, dude. right that's the he's fucking, fucking awesome. best here he is this guy's this guy's a fucking one of a kind man Where is he? Here he is. Look at this guy. Guy's a fucking What's the best? Then? I mean, yeah. this yeah, this picture. Ahead. Who's the guy on the right? Oh, we're gonna talk about him. No spoilers. Right. They, they, no go spoilers. They, go they go together. They go together. They go together. Oh, that's yeah. the other guy. Okay, they, okay. Yeah, they, I, yeah. I didn't see they the go picture. Go together like yet. fucking fire and gasoline here. Yeah. <laughs> the epic battle, which we will get oh, to, yeah. but yeah, the fucking <laughs> Manchester. Scientist. This guy. He dresses like some type of bishop. Oh yeah. He w- he wears the garb like that. He's got the hat, got the cross. I think that was his, that was the. We'll they dress like it, fucking wizards, the, okay? I Catholic mean, priests, the bishops, they dress like fucking wizards. I mean, like you know, in the basis sense, like aren't priests wizards? Yeah, like, I guess. So. Yeah. yeah, or clerics. I mean, clerics, but they all, but clerics have spells too. So, like I mean, the archbishop, <laughs> bishop, which has like the huge like the headdress almost and the staff. Yeah, like, that's super wizard. You mean stuff. like, like come on. in the sense that they both like read books and do imaginary things and claim it to be real? Is that yeah. No, this guy powers? does. This guy has a lot of spells. Okay, He's totally. He's level fifteen, I believe. Level fifteen wizard for yeah. sure. Cler- Why well, he's clerics? He could be a cleric and have wizard spells, like or something. Like okay, that. yeah, yeah, it's true. Clerics do know the spells. Um, so now, uh, from the available testimonies and the uh, the descriptions of what was going on, uh, Manchester came to the conclusion, and he was pretty certain about this because he made the statement to the local newspapers, being, um, "quote It became appallingly, appallingly apparent." that the people of Highgate were not witnessing a harmless earthbound apparition, but a vampire. vampire. Not Um, only is it this, this isn't no regular vampire either. No, not just a regular vampire. It's a high Lord. (laughs) Uh, Manchester actually claimed that this figure was in fact a King vampire. Because it's regal. 
Right. And how do you and how do you become a king vampire? You had to be a medieval black magician who had practiced uh, magic in Wallachia, the the hometown of one Count Vlad Dracula, and then good guy. And apparently, uh, this this vampire had been buried in Highgate Cemetery, and now his body had been resurrected by modern Satanists. And his demonic form now stalked the graveyard uh, in the darkness of night. No foxes are safe. Guys, you no foxes are safe. It's um, eating all the foxes. Well, he has to get his, he has like, to get his that, power back. I mean, like, yeah, like Voldemort, right? He just starts small. He starts, he starts small. Nice, you know, yeah. he's feasting on a fucking unicorn. Yeah. Nice, you know, a vat of cadaver. It's fucked. Horcrux. It's true. He, he doesn't have uh, access to modern day vampirism, which is making friends with paramedics and nurses. And every time they take blood, to don't, give you don't let me into this. Don't let me into I'm this. Not, I didn't say your name. <laughs> I didn't say this. your name. I'm just saying he's not part of the modern vampirism, which is you don't actually have to attack anyone. It's People willingly give their blood all day long. All day. It's easy. I mean, for people to use for, for blood transfusions. Well, you, you leave a little bit. You don't take it all. <laughs> it's just a little bit. It's a harmonious relationship. It's a symbiotic relationship. Exactly. As opposed to a parasite, a parasite yeah, of, no. of classic vampires. Don't okay. have to kill anyone. You don't have to do any work. <laughs> so he's missing out on Somebody that. Somebody that's got like what is it, hemochromatosis or whatever when you got high iron levels and you have to give blood regularly. Oh, he's your best friend. Yeah. Yeah. It's your buddy. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, now, it said in 1969, Manchester actually crossed paths with Elizabeth uh, Wol- 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 Wolgdila? Wolgdila, who was actually one of the, which was one of the two Wolgdila. teenage girls. Uh, who an anime thing. <laughs> Wolgdila. Wolgdila. I mean, if th- that last name doesn't, you know, say a person who saw dead rising from the grave, like I don't know what else. What does? does? Because, <laughs> yeah, like that's the that's the name of a person I would expect to see zombies or be associated with some sort of paranormal activity. Uh, but she was apparently oh, one of the girls. They, they named the fucking uh, knockoff Ouija boards after the fucking Wajila boards, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Discontinued. <laughs> Very rare. I can only find them in certain pawn shops. Yeah, they, they didn't take off. No. <laughs> Uh, um, and, and so her story also gets a little kind of, kind of strange because apparently after she had her experience, um, it's reported that she began to experience nightmares like, like regularly. And then she dreamed that some type of entity, uh, with like a, an emaciated appearance and this just malevolent dark presence had been trying to break into her bedroom and then uh you know after like <laughs> just some homeless skinny guy you got any food <laughs> let me in <laughs> I'm um, and and it was also described that she had started to become like a bit like uh less vital than she had been um before she had her experience like she started to become like uh, like people were describing her as being very pale uh, and starting to kind of like lose weight and gaunt uh, she's been vamped so what happens you don't sleep she's not sleeping she's got nightmares uh she and she told manchester about these nightmares and then uh apparently she also began sleepwalking at some point and then would experience these spells of dizziness and nausea and even headaches at some point. Uh, here's a do you know where she sleepwalked to, Dan? Any guesses? Zell? I know, but I'm not gonna tell you. She would regularly sleepwalk. And Manchester decided to stake out one night and fucking follow her. And where did he follow her to? The Highgate Cemetery. Uh, Highgate Cemetery. She would go and she would stand in front of the largest tomb at the Highgate. St- She's been vamped. Highgate I told you. Cemetery. I'm telling you, boys. She's been Come hypnotized on. by the vamp. He gave her a crucifix to wear to protect her in her sleep. What did she do when she got to the tomb? She tore it off. She's been vamped. <laughs> She's been vamped. Doesn't work. That's a myth. That's it. Well. Uh, yeah, so this is... <laughs> um, yeah, this is very. I mean, if if people even remember, this is very Mina Harkett. Is it Mina Harkett? Absolutely. Mina, yeah, like uh, it is very you know classic Dracula. You read the story, like this is one hundred percent what happened. If, if you know, assuming Dracula is a documentary, <laughs> uh, and so uh, you know, uh, apparently, according to her boyfriend, uh, who was named Keith, 
uh, she said that they had put her under a doctor's care and that it had been like pretty much like the doctor had ordered changes in her diet. And like fucking she's sleepwalking because they gave her a fucking lobotomy. Now she's just wandering around (laughs) because she's brain dead. Um, Well, I mean, it doesn't seem like the the procedures that he recommended were that drastic. It was mostly like just changes in her diet. That's why she's gone. (laughs) They gave her vitamins uh, and stuff. No, sorry, Dan. This is the 70s. They're not leeching people anymore. But no, not anymore. About that time. (laughs) Yeah, we're not. We're barely not leaching people. Um, still i'm pro- pretty sure people might have got lobotomies it, in the probably. 70s still <laughs> i think i think we looked it up on a previous case yeah. file and it was like late 60s or early 70s was the last performed lobotomy which is fucking insane let's just drill a hole in your head maybe take a piece of your brain there you go um, <laughs> it's fucking wild and so uh manchester would then and like after this like these 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 treatments didn't seem to be working. She still seemed to be kind of, you know, still losing her vitality. Um, uh, Manchester would give her another silver cross and then would, you know, hang a, a crucifix and garlic in her bedroom, uh, which is very much, you know, I mean, he'd probably, he'd probably flip through Dracula. He's like, this is the best thing to do right here. We all know this, you know, silver garlic, yeah, gar- garlic's going to work. Yeah. Okay. Um, he even gave her apparently a linen necklace uh, that was filled with salt and sprinkled with holy water and then just, he, uh, she's seasoning herself yeah this is Te- literally self up this is literally mina harker you're 100 percent right salt yeah. and garlic like this is mm. Bram stoker's dracula <laughs> um but un- unlike mina harker who ends up turning into a vampire uh wool wool Stila would go ahead she would Wolch recover Stila. fully after after these precautions and after um you know uh she got some uh, sleep. Manchester engaged Keith and they, they said some prayers, um, you know, some prayers to, to, you know, against the evil spirits of the night. Uh, she regained her health, apparently, so after this. So what Van Helsing's better. problem was, he was never a bishop. We needed a sure. bishop. No, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. A bishop of the, Kel- the Celtic Catholic Church, and he was not a, uh, a descendant of Lord Byron. <laughs> Uh, but, um, you didn't, this wasn't the only person that was, uh, Manchester was not the only vampire uh, hunter person brave enough to engage the forces of darkness that seemed to be inhabiting, uh, Highgate Cemetery. Um, Enter, enter David Ferrant, paranormal investigator, Wiccan. And Demon Slayer of the highest accord. Just before we get to him, though, we got to take a short beer break. We're going to be right back. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.